I retired last May, at the end of last May. But before that, I had fulfilled Jeremy's parents' uh, dream, and I had been a lawyer for 41 years. And uh, this story is about the first case I ever worked on right out of law school before I even took the bar exam. I uh, went to law school in Pittsburgh at Pitt, and when I got out of law school, I needed two jobs. I needed a long-term first job to get me started in the profession, but I really needed a short-term job to pay the rent during the summer while I was stu studying for the bar exam. So I went looking for jobs, and I got very lucky in that a friend of mine knew a lawyer in downtown Pittsburgh who was uh, a criminal lawyer, and I'll tell you why that's important in a moment. But the criminal lawyer's name was Wayne DeLuca, and my friend introduced me to Wayne, and I had an interview with him, and we hit it off, and Wayne hired me to be a clerk because he needed extra help that summer. He was preparing for a big murder case that he was defending that was scheduled for September. And the reason I was so thrilled with that was that all during law school, of course, one of the topics of conversation is what kind of law do you want to practice after you get out of law school? And a lot of people didn't really know. They, they thought they'd let the job market kind of take them where it did. And, and a lot of, some of them wanted to be tax lawyers, for God's sake. But, <laughs> but almost nobody wanted what I wanted, which I based my entire choice of a profession and, and where I went and everything else on movies and TV. So what did they have on movies and TV? Criminal cases, murder cases. I wanted to be a criminal lawyer, and I told everybody that. So one of the reasons my friend referred me to Wayne was that he knew Wayne had this murder case and needed help with it. So I was thrilled, and I started working with Wayne on the case, and he was having me do research and write motions and things like that about the evidence. And one day he uh, told me at the end of the day, tomorrow, uh, come down about noon uh, to my office and we're going to go over to the morgue and interview the uh, assistant coroner who did the autopsy report of the victim. We represented a guy named John. I won't give you his full name, but we represented John and John was accused of killing his estranged wife, Patty. So we were going to go talk to the uh, assistant coroner about the autopsy he had done on Patty. And I hated wearing, even now I do, but back then I really hated wearing a suit and tie. But I had to wear a suit and tie that day, and I, I went downtown. It was a blazing hot day in June of 1981, as it turned out. And I had to ride the bus. I didn't have a car. So I rode the bus to downtown Pittsburgh, and I'm sweating through my suit, and my neck is, you know, I'm, I'm choking on this collar and tie that I'm wearing. So I was really uncomfortable. But I got to Wayne's office and we started walking over to the morgue and I was getting hotter and sweatier. But then when we went in the morgue, I suddenly realized how, you know, the fact that it was a morgue, they had the air conditioning turned way up. So it was nice and chilly <laughs> in the morgue. And the coroner's office that we're going to was on the base, in the basement. So we took the elevator down to the basement and we started walking back this long, dark linoleum hall. And we come to this assistant coroner's office, knocking on the door, and he let us in. And his name was, uh, last name started with a C, so I'll just call him Dr. C. Dr. C lets us in. Dr. C was, I think it's fair to say, a pudgy man. And he had on a long white uh, lab coat, and under that he had a dress, a dress shirt and a little black bow tie. And to match the black bow tie, he had black horn rim glasses, very thick, and he had black curly hair. And, but the thing that really stood out about him was he had this round, pudgy face, and his complexion was bright pink. He had this really pink skin, and his hands, he had these pudgy pink fingers that he was uh, using as he talked to us. So I'm looking at this guy, and I'm smelling something in the air and I'm thinking, oh, that's formaldehyde. So I'm smelling formaldehyde and I'm getting kind of queasy smelling that. And he's talking and in front of him, uh, in front of his desk, he had put out a table for us and it had about 30 black and white photographs of the body before and during the autopsy. 
And he was keen to point out a lot of details to us. The issue in the case was, oh my gosh, the issue in the case was time of death. And, and we didn't agree with his findings on the time of death uh, because our client had an alibi for a different time. And anyway, he starts showing us these pictures and they got increasingly more gruesome. And finally he was showing us a picture of the brain which was in a bowl. And then he showed us these very close up pictures of certain body parts. And he was pointing out with his little pointer the insect larva that he had found on the body and how large or small they were. And that helped him determine, he thought, the time of death. So he's pointing all that out. There was a knock on the door. He let his assistant in. His assistant's carrying a bag of McDonald's food. <laughs> he says, I hope you don't mind if I eat while I meet with you because it is my lunch hour. And we said, OK. So he takes the bag, sits down at his desk, pulls out a Big Mac. And he's very daintily unwrapping the Big Mac with his pink chubby fingers. He puts it up, it takes the first bite of the Big Mac, and I notice this little uh, drop of s secret sauce or special <laughs> sauce dripping out of the corner of his mouth and starting to drip down his chin. When I regained consciousness, uh, <laughs> Wayne was patting me on the face saying, Mike, are you okay? And I said, yeah, I think I'm okay. And they got me up and got me out of there and I'm sucking in the, the, the fresh air finally. And Wayne said to me, Mike, are you sure you want to be a criminal lawyer? <laughs> and to make a long story short, I practiced for 41 years and I never again worked on a criminal case. <laughs>